The first two steps of this project will require a two foot piece of aluminum foil, a roll of masking tape, and a pair of scissors. To begin, use a permanent marker to mark off the different parts of your animal on your piece of aluminum foil. In this example, I am making an animal that has a tail, so I've included the tail. You are going to mark off using your marker the lines to indicate where you're going to cut with the scissors. I have also labeled the parts on my foil to make it very clear so that I know which parts are going to be for which part of the animal. The parts with X's will not be used, so there is a head, a body, a tail, and four legs. If my animal was not going to have a tail, like if it was a bear or some other animal like that that didn't have a long tail, then I would just draw a line straight through instead of marking the area for the tail. Now I'm going to very carefully cut the foil. Be very gentle because foil does rip very easily. All right, so I've made all of the cuts to my foil and cut off the extra pieces. Now it's time to very carefully fold and scrunch the foil paper um, to be able to create the armature. So I'm going to start with the head and fold it into itself. And this is going to get so much smaller than it starts out as. Um, and I want to remember that if my um, animal has ears, I'm going to want to leave some some shape for the ears too. But for now I can just make that crumpled up and the leg also going to crumple up. And then for the body, this is where it can get a little tricky. Already, you can see that my foil has gotten a lot smaller and more compact, and the more I scrunch this, the smaller it will get. Okay, so there's my basic animal shape. At this point, it could be a dog or a cat or a tiger or a lion, anything really, but now I have my very small, from that large piece of foil to this very small animal shape and I'm going to now use some masking tape to cover the entire armature in tape and secure and bulk up any areas. So for example, one of the areas that could use bulking up is right here, it's a little bit thin. What I can do is take some of my scrap piece and bulk it up by wrapping it and condensing it into that area. And now that gives it a little bit of a sturdier torso. Another area that's really loose to me is this head part and I can take my other scrap piece and wrap it and secure that part a little bit better. All right, now I'm ready for the tape. To prepare for the taping, rip off several pieces and place them on the side of your work surface. If you don't have masking tape, painter's tape would work just as well. Okay, so there is my taped over armature. It looks a little bit like a mummified animal now. And that is the um, first step to this project. The next step in our sculpture project, now that our aluminum figure is covered in masking tape, is to add a layer of at-home um, paper mache. Now the nice thing about this layer is that there are really no um, art materials needed. Normally this is something that 
in the classroom we would use uh, paper mache paste but this is a project that's going to use just tissues and water so putting our tape figure aside we want to get a box of tissues and take out a stack to have available to use for our sculpture uh, toilet paper also works very well for this paper towels and napkins not quite as well so um, you really want something that has a lot of pulp to it which is why toilet paper or tissues will work better than paper towels or napkins. Okay. So what you're going to need to do is take one tissue at a time and fold it up. It's helpful to have some sort of plate or something underneath to catch any drips and keep your work surface clean and dry. So we're gonna start with this tissue and then we're gonna use our hands dipped in some water to just add water to the tissue. We don't want to dunk the tissue directly into the water because it will get um, too, too wet too fast. So we're just going to use our fingers to get this damp, but not soaking wet. Once it's damp, we're going to use it to wrap around our figure. and then squeeze and press. And the tissue should stick to itself. And then just keep doing that for the entire figure. You might have to fold some pieces smaller to get around smaller areas, but you're gonna do the same thing till the entire sculpture is covered and you can't see any more masking tape. Once you've covered everything with one layer, it's good to add a whole piece over the already wet tissue layer and then just mold it to your figure, mold it to your animal sculpture and press it on uh, until the moisture soaks through this new layer of tissue. Now that the entire figure has been covered in damp tissue and the excess water has been squeezed out, you will need to let this sit and completely dry for about two full days. After sitting for two days, our sculpture is now completely dry and the tissue has hardened onto the surface. So it's a pretty solid surface at this point. It shouldn't be very squishy, shouldn't feel wet, it should be completely dry, and you should be able to hear when you're tapping on it that it's pretty solid and firm. So we are now ready to add paint and finish our sculpture. So because um, we're going to try to seal this and paint this in the same step, we're actually going to be mixing a little bit of glue um, into our paint and that's going to give it a sealed surface. So the first thing I want to do is start with um, a very tiny de detail. I actually want to start with the eye. So I'm going to take a little bit of yellow. And this is Crayola Tempera Paint. And now a little bit of blue. I want to 
and just mix that together so I can get green for the eyes. just a little bit of glue because this is a small amount of paint so just a little dot of glue and I'm using a plastic lid as my surface I can wash this after very easily okay to make this a little bit easier I'm actually going to use the end of the paintbrush and decide where my eyes are going to be and just put a dot Another small area that I want to work on is inside the ears and also the nose, and that's going to be pink. So now I'm going to use some white paint. And just a tiny, tiny bit. of red and mix that in. And just like with the green, I'm going to put a little dot of Elmer's Glue All Glue. brush get in small areas so I have that pink So those two colors are out of the way. I don't want to accidentally mix them in. And I'm going to be making a tuxedo cat. So a tuxedo cat is a cat that's black and white. And I'm starting with my lighter color, which is white. So I'm going to do more glue than I did last time. So last time it was just one dot. This time I'm going to do about three good sized dots. And I'm going to mix that in with the paint. your animal whatever color you want it doesn't even have to be a realistic color it could be a made-up color so I'm gonna work on my kitty cat and I know that I want the belly to be white so I'm going to paint now even though my tissue paper is white um, I want to still paint over anything that I want to be white with white paint because that's gonna give it a finished surface a finished appearance
Okay, and that is our finished painted kitty cat. It's a little bit hard to show you because it's still wet, but I'm gonna try to tip the plate a little bit so you can see all the sides. Um, so I'll try to pick it up from its paws even though they're still kind of wet, but I'll leave it dry. Um, you wanna let yours dry before you move it, but here it is. A painted kitty cat. And it should dry probably in less than an hour. So you want to make sure it's totally dry before you move it. And then even once it's dry, you can still clean all this paint off. So I hope you enjoyed making this sculpture.